Guys, Ubisoft did something amazing. They impressed people. <laughs> okay, I know before people comment, they've impressed people before, but what I'm referring to is the reveal of their new Star Wars Outlaws game, which impressed pretty much everybody who saw it. In fact, the only real criticism people have had is that it looks too good to be true. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to take a skeptical look at the game to see whether or not you would be justified in getting excited for this. And just so everybody understands what the term skepticism actually means, it means that you are simply not convinced of a proposition until there is adequate evidence to justify acceptance of that position. So in the context that we're using it here, are you justified in being excited for the game? Is there reason, good reason, to be excited for it. And before anybody says it, no, I don't want to use the word hyped because hype, in my opinion, makes you stupid. In fact, we have a t-shirt on the merch store that's entirely dedicated to this, simply stating hype makes you stupid. Because I think when you're hyped for something, it puts these weird blinders on, people lose sense and touch with any sort of critical thinking, and they just start to ignore the warning signs because they're so excited for that one idea of the game they have but we don't want to do that we're going to look as critically and fairly as we can at star wars outlaws to see whether or not this thing is worth getting excited for and first things first from the gameplay reveal that we got at the ubisoft forward event after it was initially announced at the xbox event the gameplay looks very good very high fidelity and shockingly enough they're actually playing this in ultra wide which is considered a very niche aspect ratio to use. In fact, I have an ultra wide monitor. I don't use it for my main gameplay footage anymore because it's so niche. So the fact that they're coming in and using it so proudly and confidently is kind of amazing to me. Whether or not that means anything or if we should take away that, oh, they're so confident about performance that they can focus on the ultra wide performance. I, I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with tech or software development to say, but I did find it striking that they were playing this game and using footage in ultra wide because that's so rare. It's not common that studios showcase their games running in ultra wide, at least as far as I'm aware. Anyway, the gameplay looks good. Graphically, it's impressive. It seems to run pretty smoothly. The sound design is really good. I would play it, but the Star Wars music inevitably gets copyright struck, so I'm just not gonna risk it. But everything we've seen in this gameplay footage looks pretty solid. I mean, you could point to like little bitty things. Oh, the character model kind of glitched out when he fell down and it, it like kind of vibrated a little. Like, come on, if that's your takeaway from this gameplay reveal, I don't know how to help you. But I would say that you can definitely see the inspiration taken from games like The Division 2, which is the last title that this particular team worked on. All told, it looks pretty good. I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It just looks pretty good. Now, once you actually leave the initial area, we see an open world presented to the player and it's also very beautiful. There are so many assets. There's so many plants blowing in the wind. There's smoke effects and cloud effects with volumetric lighting in the distance. This looks very, very good for what is an open world Star Wars game. Actually, the first open world Star Wars game ever. And from what we can tell, this is not just an open world Star Wars game, but it's an open world uh, Star Wars game multiple planets that you can travel to. I would not expect you to be able to just free roam the planet like in a game like No Man's Sky or Star Citizen, but rather there will be large maps that you can land on just like you would see in the Star Wars films themselves. But I'll tell you what, I am always struck at just how much is happening in the frame. Like if we just pause it, you can see NPCs on the side, you can see ships flying, you can see all of the foliage in the distance is going to be blowing with the wind. You'll see rocks blowing across the street as you're driving from the wind as well. You're going to see NPCs driving their own little vehicles, birds, or I guess they're not birds. They're some sort of alien species of <laughs> flying creature. All of this is happening at the same time, and it's just wildly smooth. It's very, very impressive. You walk inside the cantina and you immediately are greeted with a smooth cinematic transition to cutscene quality, which is extremely smooth. Look how silky that was. Oh, baby. And it looks great. The color grading immediately kicks in. It seems to be rendering at a higher resolution. The hair is still a little funky, but all told, I mean, this looks tremendous for that smooth transition 
in real time. I mean, that's very, very impressive for an open world game to do. I can't stress that enough. That is crazy. We also get a sequence here where you're given the option to bribe or not to bribe this Imperial officer. That brings up questions of branching consequence for your decisions. Seemingly in this sequence, because you choose not to bribe, you get a wanted level and then that forces you off the planet and you could die presumably from it, which could lead to penalties in terms of currency lost or whatever else. And then you see just how smooth it is as you leave, you retain your credit payout so you maximize how much money you actually got out of the mission and then you just simply have to escape. It begs the question of just how much variability there's going to be throughout the main quest. And once again, a lot of this looks great. Most people are looking at this and saying, oh, that's awesome. I'm very impressed. But people's biggest concern is that it looks too good to be true, which to be honest is a very good problem to have because so long as the game is actually what you're saying it is, you're going to live up to the hype. You just have to do what you say you're going to do. We'll talk about that more in a second, but first let's get through the rest of the video. So from here, we actually get to see a very, very smooth transition yet again. This is thanks probably to Ubisoft's crazy data streaming tech, where you see the ship take off, launch straight into the air, in real time, no loading screens, no pausing, nothing. And before we know it, we have fully transitioned from the planet's surface to outer space in real time without so much as a hiccup, without a load screen or anything. And this is something that not even Starfield is going to be doing. They will have a hard load screen between those two sequences of on the ground exploration and space exploration, two totally separate things. Whereas in this game, it's just fluid. It just works. You just fly up and you're in space. And again, I can't stress just enough how crazy that is. There's a reason why games like No Man's Sky or Star Citizen are considered really exceptional for being able to offer features like that. And it's because it is a technical marvel to be able to pull it off. There's so much that has to happen under the hood to get that working where you smoothly transition from on the ground to outer space with all of the different meshes and lighting systems. And uh, you also have animation sets that have to be dumped because you're no longer running around on foot. And then you have to pull in all of the different animation sets into memory for all of the ships flying around. And you have to simulate all this crazy movement at zero gravity. It's wild. And then to allow the player to instantaneously go straight into space combat like we see here is just further craziness. It's wild that they have this working. And I would say that it's not necessarily something brand new that they just started working on. This is probably tech borrowed from other Ubisoft projects. But again, we'll get to that in just a minute. Here we see a quick light speed jump to another area. I don't really understand how this works. Apparently, you just kind of point in a given direction and then you take off at light speed and you pop out at a destination that you wanted to go to. Who knows if the player has more control over that or not. I, I really don't know. But that was pretty silky smooth. I mean, that's crazy. I, I can't stress enough. This whole thing is so smooth. It's wild. The rest of what we see in the trailer is sort of a montage of the different areas we'll be traveling in the game. Lots of different biomes, planet surfaces, lots of different NPC archetypes, combat sequences, craziness craziness and the fact that this takes place between the empire strikes back and return of the jedi i mean it's in a perfect and very very interesting time in star wars lore and so much of this just looks baller i i cannot stress enough just it's so clean it's awesome so what's the concern what's the problem why are people not just like losing it over this well it basically comes down to one word Ubisoft. You see, love it or hate it, Ubisoft has a history of screwing big projects like this up and also of over-promising and under-delivering. And then also a history, to add one more thing to this, of downgrading projects that look really good as they get closer to launch. I mean, does anybody remember this trailer from E3 2012 for Watch Dogs? This was basically supposed to be Ubisoft's GTA 5. It was supposed to be massive and all of the gameplay that they showed off like this right here for the time looked stunning. It was crazy that this was running 
on a console. Even though this footage you're seeing is the highest resolution available for this trailer, which is 720p. That's how long ago this was. But people saw this and were super, super pumped that this was going to be Ubisoft's magnum opus. This was going to be incredible. And let's just say it didn't live up to the hype. This digital foundry side-by-side -side from way back in the day really shows you just how much it was downgraded. E3 2012 looks phenomenal. And then on PC Ultra, it's just nowhere near the same level. All of the post-processing effects, the smoke effects, all of that has been stripped out in the final version because they presumably couldn't get it working at all. It's something that happened over a decade ago, granted, but this is something that Ubisoft has been caught doing time and time again. And there's a reason why people are very skeptical and suspicious when they show something that looks really cool. But you know what? Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. That is something Ubisoft has done before, but there is no evidence to say that they're going to do that in this case. It's just a concern people have, which I think is valid. But I don't think that that concern warrants dismissing the game entirely because Ubisoft has done that in the past. Keep an eye on it for sure but I don't think there's any reason to think that this game, Star Wars Outlaws, is actually gonna look like hot baby garbage at the end of the day just because they wanted to make it look really good in this trailer. I, I don't expect that to be a problem. Maybe it's not very easy to get it running at that high fidelity level. Maybe it's really demanding. Maybe it takes a 4090 or something from Apex Gaming PCs to get it running at that quality level. Who knows? It's just speculation at this point. But who is actually making the game? Well, it's a studio that many people are probably familiar with, whether or not they realize it. It's a studio underneath Ubisoft called Massive Entertainment, and they make massive projects. The last two things they worked on were The Division and The Division 2. And you'll notice they are currently working on Frontiers of Pandora, the Avatar game, which is set to release this December, and then they're also working on Star Wars Outlaws, which is set to release next year. Now, from all of the articles and stuff that I've been able to hunt down, it seems as though Ubisoft Massive is a team of roughly 600 to 800 people right now still hiring and taking on more staff. They could be as high as a thousand employees by the time Star Wars Outlaws actually comes out. And in case you're not aware, a typical AAA game is usually produced by anywhere from 150 to 350 people over the course of a handful of years. Ubisoft is able to put thousands of people on one or two projects at a time, which is how they're able to pump out massive projects like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and other massive titles as well without so much as breaking a sweat. But that's not to say that they haven't been working on these games for years and years. It's not like they just start throwing together Avatar quickly and then they're gonna throw together Star Wars Outlaws quickly. They've been working on these projects for a while. In fact, they announced the Avatar game not in 2021 when they officially revealed the title and name card and everything, but rather all the way back in February of 2017 when they revealed that they were working on a project with James Cameron's company to create an Avatar game. It got some people pretty excited, but not many people knew anything about it for four years until we saw the official reveal in 2021. And now we're getting the game two years after that. And if you're looking to know whether or not somebody who cares about attention to detail and quality work, whether or not they actually approve of a studio like Massive, well, James Cameron himself actually discussed his impression of the Massive team and why he chose to allow them to make a game on Avatar after they pitched him some stuff. What he said was, quote, what impressed me about Massive were the group's passion for this project and the power of its snowdrop engine, said Cameron, whose Lightstorm Entertainment joined after seeing a snowdrop run game prototype. He continued on saying, quote, with the power of Snowdrop and the team's passion and obsessive focus to detail, we know they're the right group to bring the beauty and danger of Pandora to life. And without a doubt, in those trailers, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. Clearly. I mean, the surface to space transition is wild. The ability to move with a very fast speeder bike across the map without a lot of pop in or frame drops or anything as far as we can tell right now. That's all very, very impressive. But it's not a surprise when you look back around that 2017 period and see what tech Ubisoft had developed all the way back then that could be used in a game like Avatar or in this case, like Star Wars. This here is an in-engine gameplay tech demo showcasing what their Snowdrop engine is able to do in real time. This was working all the way back six years ago, and you can see how they're able 
to just zoom out on a planet going into space with actual physics of orbital mechanics working in real time. And then with a single button press, they can zap all the way back into the planet's surface. This was working six years ago, and we haven't really seen it implemented anywhere. And this is why I expressed uh, excitement about this Star Wars project earlier. See how quickly you just transitioned back? That, that's absolute madness. But this is why I was excited for it, because they've had this tech for a while and they have not used it yet. And so to see them introduce something like this into a Star Wars game could be really really exciting i mean you know how todd howard just had to come out about starfield and announce that there's no rovers or anything presumably the only reason they couldn't get rovers working in starfield is because the creation engine or sorry as the fanboys call it the creation engine 2 which totally is brand new and not just a reworked version of what was there before that engine cannot get vehicles working i've spoken to modders to people who work in the creation engine for massive mod projects and apparently it just can't run and stream data fast enough to allow fast travel on land or at least close to objects that would be popping in and out and then you see something like this running in real time and it's just baffling like it's crazy that this is running in real time i agree ubisoft has not released many great games in the last five years but one thing I don't think you can argue is that they don't have really impressive tech when it comes to data streaming and things like that. Just the ability in like Assassin's Creed Origins to fly with your little eagle bird all the way across the country of Egypt and then zap back to Bayek in a single button press without load screens or anything. That is madness. And this data streaming is what's allowing them to do this right here on screen. And it's what's also allowing them to get that crazy cool surface to space transition working in star wars outlaws so don't think that that's like some sort of secret psyop fake gameplay footage that they're showing that's almost certainly running in real time using the tech that they had developed six years ago for beyond good and evil 2. it's not necessarily too good to be true but okay let's go back to reality back to earth a little bit and talk about reasonable concerns and managing and mitigating that excitement so that it doesn't turn into hype, which is very, very dangerous if you want to avoid disappointment or wasting your money through pre-orders and things like that. Listen, as far as I can tell, it is a fact that this gameplay they showed is very impressive. There is reason to be excited as far as I'm concerned for this game based off of that gameplay. When the only major concerns people have about a title is that it looks too good to be true, Again, that's a good place to be. You should still be skeptical and evaluate whether or not what they're showing is possibly too good to be true. As in the case of a lot of famous game failures in years past, we all know the story of the creation of Fable, where there were all sorts of promises made and not quite kept just because the developers were so excited at the idea of getting these things working that they kind of spoke before they had it working and had to cut it eventually. Or in the case of Cyberpunk 2077, where they talked about all these crazy features and then they never came to fruition. They said, oh yeah, there's gonna be crazy wall running and there's gonna be all sorts of like ricochets and things that you can do. And none of that ended up being in the game. They cut it all. And in those cases, that led to disappointment because people said, this seems too good to be true, but I bet it's true because it's from the guys that did The Witcher 3. And that gets really, really dangerous. But the good thing about this game coming from Ubisoft is that people don't have that sort of delusion. They don't have their hype goggles on where they lose sight of the potential red flags. And that protects them from disappointment. That limits the maximum excitement. So they don't bleed into the crazy hype that gets dangerous like we've seen with so many games that lead to disappointment before, whether it's No Man's Sky or Cyberpunk or whatever. Going into this game, people understand it's coming from a studio that has a spotty track record, from a publisher rather, that with a spotty track record, and that's going to protect them from that overexcitement. And I think this is generally a really good thing because I view this whole thing as a spectrum. I've shown this example before uh, when I've showcased this kind of point for people. If we look at this as the starting point, so if we say, okay, we start right here when we're considering a game, whether it's going to be awesome or terrible, we start in the middle, totally unconvinced. As we see good things that excite us more and more, we might bounce along further to the right and we start to get excited. Initially here, we're just passive. Here, we're starting to get cautiously optimistic. Here, we get 
like really, really excited for the game. And then in this red danger area, we are hyped. In this case, you start to miss warning signs. You stop listening to things that could pull you out of that, things that should get you to kind of level out that level of hype. You just start to ignore it. And this is where you don't want to be because if you end up hyped and then the game comes out and it's not the second coming of Hideo Kojima, you're going to plummet very far, very quickly. And it's just a bad thing. It's almost like you circle back on the spectrum to the other side. It's like a circle and you just end up hating the game because it didn't live up to that expectation. In the same way, something can happen similarly when you absolutely detest a game because they just blow it. In the case of something like Forspoken, where we all started here having never heard of it, it's a brand new IP, we have no reason to hate on the game, but we start to see dialogue that doesn't really make a lot of sense so that pulls us a little lower but then oh the graphics look really good so maybe it pulls us back over here but then they go and they reveal a demo that's just terrible and that pulls us all down here where we start to get really really negative and then the game comes out and a bunch of clips go viral of how terrible the dialogue is and it's just unfunny and uninteresting and we all end up kind of down here in this hate section which also is unhealthy because in reality the game probably doesn't deserve abject hatred it's just like not a very good game but maybe at 20 bucks it's fine it's just not good <laughs> it's fine it's even bad but it's not god awful okay maybe before spoken wasn't the best example because it's pretty bad but you, hopefully you kind of get what i'm saying but all of this to say i think star wars outlaws looks really really good and I think there is reason to be excited. I wouldn't go so far as getting hyped, but I wouldn't say get hyped for hardly any game except maybe something that's almost certainly a guaranteed knock out of the park like a Grand Theft Auto 6 because Rockstar literally never misses. They might eventually, so I still wouldn't get hyped, but if people were hyped for GTA 6, I kind of get it. I understand why, you know? But in this case, we should just look at Star Wars Outlaws with cautious optimism, I would say, as we start to find out more about it. And frankly, once we see Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, we're going to know much more what this studio is capable of in the single player adventure space, because previously they've only done The Division and before that they were a tiny team. So they haven't got a lot of experience in this realm might be to their advantage might be that there are new players in town and they're going to blow us all away or they might just totally blow it and try to turn it into like a weird mmo but single player and it might just be a disaster the point is we withhold judgment until there's sufficient evidence to come to a conclusion and in this case i don't think we can come to a conclusion positive or negative other than that the trailer looks really good and i don't think there's sufficient evidence to dismiss the trailer for any reason it just seems to be a really cool and interesting looking game that i can't wait to find out more about but as always let me know what you think of star wars outlaws in the comment section below i'm pretty intrigued and interested and in the coming months as we start to find out more i will be on the front lines with ubisoft to get more information on it and hopefully one day to play it early so I can report to you guys whether or not it actually is worth paying any attention to. But with that, thank you for watching. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.